Hey guys, welcome back to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host Scott Ramp, and it is Friday, April 19th. Yes, it is April 19th, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful, fun things that are happening this weekend and more as I ge usher you into the, the weekend. But good news, weather's looking good. 34 degrees right now, but 67 is going to be the high. Uh, 37 is going to be the low, but you can expect those temperatures kind of remain the same. Saturday, you're going to have partly sunny skies with highs of 54, Sunday 57. And these kind of temperatures are going to be pretty stagnant throughout the week. And then, of course, by Sunday night, you should see some chance of showers. But you only see that at the tail end of the weekend. So you guys, if you guys are planning out going out and about, today will be should be that day. And yeah, and speaking of days... Um, it's Bird Watch. We're doing Bird Watch 2018. And this is from the Cornell uh, Lab. So, th of course, the osprey nest is at the mouth of the spectacular Helga Canyon at the edge of Missoula. And I'm doing a Bird Watch 2018. They, they we're not showing any more bear. But without further ado, here is a little taste of Bird Watch. Oh, yeah. Look at that bird just sitting in his nest. Her nest. I think it's the female bird. I'm not sure. Yeah. Cool. Birds. Awesome. Moving on. Um, in <laughs> the snow is melting in many areas, as you can tell by some of the uh, warmer weathers that are happening around here. In northern Montana regions are flooding as a result of record high snowfall in the past season. The spring runoff and recent rain has caused the National Weather Service to issue flood warnings and advisories to cities and county leaders who are warning residents to prepare for the rising waters. The mayor of Harlem, Montana, a town of 800 people near Fork Belknap Indian Reservation, ordered the evacuation of several homes threatened by water overflowing from a nearby creek. Um, Governor Steve Bullock declared a flooding emergency Wednesday in seven counties, the Fort Belknap Indian Reservation and the town near Chester. The declaration will allow the use of state government services and equipment and let the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers help protect infrastructures. The flooding isn't likely to go away anytime soon. Swollen uh, tributaries are gushing into the Milk River, which is expected to be in flood stage in locations until the beginning of May, weather services uh, forecasters say. In national news, Senator Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Kentucky, uh, from a Republican friend in Kentucky, does not support a measure that would make harder for President Trump to fire special counsel Robert Mueller, but that isn't stopping some of the Republic Republicans from forcing the debate. Uh, from uh, For those of you who don't already know, Robert Mueller has been get investigating the White House uh, since uh, the election um, when um, it was discovered that there was Russians tampering with the 2016 president election, and people have uh, been found guilty with in ties to the White House. Supporters of the legislation say that it's just wishful thinking. Senator Richard uh, Blumendell uh, from um, Connecticut said Tuesday that Republicans who hope they can persuade Trump not to fire Mueller through such discussions aren't facing reality. Trump has crossed Republicans on a number of issues, like the recent tariffs in China. Many in Congress have grown wary of the string of White House firings, like the former Secretary of State Rex Tillerson uh, that came without warning. Blumenthal said Trump could do the same to Mueller. Um, thus, the Republicans who want to protect Mueller want to see the investigation through, while other Republicans think that this bill is unnecessary since, they, since Mitch McConnell and Senator Orrin Hatch from, of U2 simply believe Trump won't fire Mueller. Uh, for now, a majority of Republicans say that they agree with the special counsel should allow, be allowed to finish their investigation, and they say that they trust Trump won't get in his way. So, that kind of concludes everything that you need to know about what's happening in the news. Here's some MCAT news for you guys. If you are a participant of MCAT and you watch MCAT and you um, have many of your programs filmed by MCAT, you guys um, were asking um, Missoula Community Access Television as asking people in um, anywhere to pick, take a survey. Uh, of course, if you're t willing to take a few minutes to shape the future of how c we communicate with each other for the next 10 to 15 years, please take the online survey and share your experience with charter cable services in Missoula and public education and government channels, programming and services managed by Missoula Community Access Television. So this is basically your reflection of how you view charter and how you view uh, your own Missoula channel through Charter as well. So we'd like you to take it, and it's as easy as going on to MCAT.org and clicking on this cute little cat. 
All right, so anyways, let's uh, talk about some new programs. We got some new programs, and here they are. Democracy uh, and the, uh, the, the United States of America does not succeed without effort. It does not continue without dedicated people that are they're committed to the processes of this country. You're already starting that. Keep feeding that. Keep feeding that energy. Stay engaged. Okay. I'm, I, I see this room, and it just gets me. Uh, it gets me buoyed uh, and excited about the future. So please continue to stay engaged. I wish you all the best of luck. Um, I kind of want to stick around and watch and see how this all turns out. Uh, and hopefully, you had a chance to, to visit and enjoy our campus a little bit. Uh, Trust the Irish to come out with swords and shields as well. They'll do it. And then have a rare old lively scrap, such as the heart can rejoice in. But in the name of human sanity, never appoint another cannon. In other words, my words now, fight when you must, when your blood boils over and your anger won't be gainsaid. But fight face to face, hand to hand, in your own quarrels and in your own skin as a responsible human being and not a machine, or worse, a machine operator. I think William James would have agreed with that. I'll go further. I think Mary Wollstonecraft, Margaret Fuller, Dorothy Day, and Grace Paley would have agreed. I believe that one can be, must be, at the same time a pacifist and feminist, and an upholder of the martial virtues. Exactly how I leave to you as an exercise. You know, what's happening upstream, what's happening downstream, what's happening on both sides of the banks beyond that quarter of mile section. So if we can see whole river systems get protected, that would be excellent. Uh, that there's kind of a lack of whole river systems in a lot of places in the world. So at least bringing into consideration the tributaries and the headwaters and not just focusing, focusing on the most scenic gorges, um, but that integral idea of a river basin, I think is really important and a, um, a way to improve upon the system. And there's some statistics about how every child, every 30 seconds, is killed due to the effects of malaria. And while we were there, we met a number of people that we worked with that had lost a child to malaria. It's the leading cause of death in children in Kenya. There's also the HIV and AIDS epidemic that I was talking about, which affects about 7% of the whole population. The, currently, the medication is free from the government if you go to the sites, the government sites. But I imagine during the time of the strike, that's going to be more difficult. And also, there's transportation issues. They might say the medication is free, but you have to go to this facility that's five miles away. And if they don't have the transportation to get there, they won't have compliance. There's also a social stigma with HIV. So if you had HIV, people could be embarrassed about it, or maybe your family was embarrassed about it, and they wouldn't let you get treatment. So the fathers, um, and it's a very patriarchal system, the fathers would determine whether you can get treatment or the husband would determine whether it was okay if you got treatment. Hey guys, I feel pretty. Do you feel pretty? It's time for Pre-Critic. First off is another, another movie by uh, a comedian, Amy Schumer, and she's feeling pretty in this upcoming movie that's coming up today, and you can watch it. So, I don't know. Um, I'm not convinced. It's like one of those movies, it's kind of like, uh, so basically the whole idea of this movie is that she bumps her head and then she has a perspective of that she's prettier than she is. I don't know. I mean, that's basically the movie. So anyways, she's in a Zuma class and actually makes her believe that she looks like she's been trying to look like by going to Zuma in the first place. Anyways, this is kind of like a shallow how in a reverse where a terrible comedian soon thinks they are really funny. Uh, wait, I mean, a uh, not so good looking girl thinks she looks amazing. Of course, anyways, uh, they talk about some of the tropes and, and some of the things. And it's, it's a way, uh, I don't know, this is like uh, a comedy. You know how sometimes, you know, a comedy tries to use humor to convey an absolute truth? That's what you kind of can expect from this movie. Up next, we got Super Troopers 2. 
While your girlfriends are going to I Feel Pretty, you can feel nostalgic for a group of irresponsible highway patrolmen back after 10 plus years of doing other things and not having a good grasp on a new and original, but harking back to the old. Um, Super Troopers returns for the sequel with a majority of cast and crew and maybe a couple other cameos from the other movies and stuff or whatever. You know, they usually do this in a lot of comedies. But, of course, enjoy the squeakquel of a comedy. So, um, like any comedy, squeakquels usually don't turn out to be that well-received. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's like comedies have a tendency to have the freshness, but when they come up with a sequel where a comedy usually just kind of harps on the same tropes. Anyways... That's pre-critic. <laughs> There's just a lot of other movies coming out, a lot of different things, but these are the kind of like the mainstream movies that are coming out. But all I got to say is that I this is just, uh, I guess, a nice little palate cleanser if you guys want to laugh and have a good time or not. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so that concludes that. And speaking of laughter, enjoy a nice Flagship Friday video of the week from the kids at Washington Middle School. Hello, we're, this is Aiden Vlogs. The mini series of Aiden Michael. This is this is Paul. This is this is Turtle. And we're here at school because I didn't know why. I didn't tell them. I I said to them, hide the camera. Let's go inside and wait till you know the end of school is struck. And so this is how it ended. Our families probably are missing us, but who cares, right? It gets into center. The world may never know. Follow us on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Instagram and Where make sure to, and make sure to find us on Facebook using the link up there. Well, that was a vlog. But... Okay, so let's just like um, wrap it. So yeah. Whoa, the haunted camera lens. Let's just wrap this up. Okay. Yo, but how long do you think it's been here? Probably a couple of months. Right? So it's brand new. Okay. It was. Dude, I'm crazy. Okay, stop. I'll just zoom in. Dude, I'll just zoom in. Get some pictures. Who are you? What do you want? Well, I thought you were here for my party. I mean, I really appreciate you guys finding my lens for me. I lost it. I, I had no idea where it was. I want to be able to have a party without it. Why did you drag me here, dude? I thought we were playing party games. You know? 
We should do a vlog about this. Have you seen our camera? I give it to you. Oh, missing camera. I know how that feels. It's been forever since I've had a birthday party, so I figured I'd uh, have a big one. So I sent invitations out to ev like ev everybody in the neighborhood, really. Yeah, ev ev everybody in the neighborhood. Then I decided I was going to rent this room out for my birthday party, and I figured, uh, well, school's a public place, right? Right, right, yeah, school's a public place, so the public could come to my birthday party and it'd just be a blast. We could all have some fun. Every year, the city talks about the budget, and this year, the city is no stranger about talking about the 2019 fiscal year budget in budget committee meetings. So, it's the beginning of city council, as you can tell by this camera angle. Uh, dis the discussion for the uh, prim preliminary budget calendar and process, as well as the new WDesk software. Ooh, new software. Uh, staff will discuss uh, upcoming WDesk training for city council on how this new software will affect the budget process and document management. Here's Lee Griffith, Griffin, talking about this a little bit. So when we get to the point when the mayor comes and presents the executive budget, we will also schedule a training session with city council to train you on the new WDesk software. And uh, we're determining um, um, all the appropriate permission levels, and we'll come and train folks on how to get logged in, how to navigate um, through all of those documents and so forth. And this hopefully will be um, just much easier for folks to find the information that they're looking for. Uh, we will not be doing a budget portal where we're posting both spreadsheets to the FTP site and PDFs to the website and so forth. We will get some of these presentations up on the website for the citizens to be able to view as well. All right. So basically, uh, the long and short of it, they want to make it easier for people to basically find out what the city is putting their money towards without it looking more like a receipt and a, 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 a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and more like an accessible thing where you're just like, okay, here's my neighborhood. How much money? Okay, streets. Okay, cool. Basically, it's like Google, but with a Missoula budget. All right, up next, we got some more stuff. This is Julie Armstrong, who talks about some of the budget processes. If there's a way to work on multiple scenarios during budget season, I know they already come in prioritized, at least the CIPs do, but perhaps we, we go through the executive budget, we set it, then we set, um, if, it's, if Dale is hearing rumblings that we're going to come in 2 or 3% under on DOR values, maybe we set a budget according to that. We say, okay, if this happens, this is what we think we would like to do. And then if we think revenues are coming in higher, we could have a wish list. But if we did that ahead of time, at least there wouldn't be any surprises. And we've already kind of thought through the process. So then when we have the next hearing, when we actually get the values, we're not starting from zero saying, okay, we, we need to do this. All right. So um, just, you know, to help clarify, um, Julie Armstrong just really wants to um, basically have all their ducks in a row and hopefully that this new w desk would be uh, an appropriate way to have the city's budget a little more accessible by anybody okay lee griffin gives an example how of how this would work with different types of budgets so here is lee griffin once again this year's um, a budget would be adopted contingent upon X. X usually being that taxable values come within our estimates, uh, you know, within three hundred thousand dollars, or you know, two hundred thousand dollars. X. I think what was done previously was actually the reverse of what Julie was stating, and it was actually um, a less conservative budget that would then have to be pared down. Um, but I, I can see this um, scenario where a conservative budget is. Adopted contingent, and then if larger valuations come in, it's it's opened, and other requests are assessed. Yeah, that resonates with me, Julie. 
All right, so that was the last quote I have from the budget committee meeting. You can watch the whole budget committee meeting by um, going on to uh, the uh, ci.missoula.mt.us and you look up agendas, webcast minutes with the budget committee meeting. But there will be a discussion. This is this will be ongoing. Uh, they usually finalize the budget in um, the fiscal year 2019 or any year, usually by the summertime. Um, Land use and planning, one of the biggest things that are happening in Missoula County is that they are embarking on Missoula County Fairgrounds. The city annexed the Missoula County Fairgrounds, which basically technically would make it Missoula uh, City Fairgrounds, but it still has the namesake of county since it parts of the county. So what a lot of the things they're doing is that the city is partnering with the county once again to work on a project to improve the infrastructure at the Missoula County Fairgrounds. So in the LUP Land Use and Planning Committee meet regarding the schedule schematic plan for the facilities, design guidelines under consideration, and the potential for coordination between city and county as plans and design guidelines are finalized and implemented. Emily Bentley, uh, she's director of the uh, Missoula County Fairgrounds, explains why Missoula should invest in Missoula County Fairgrounds. So you guys know that as citizen, citizens and leaders, we have a um, duty to be stewards to, of the community resources that have been entrusted to our care and to ensure that our cultural identity is preserved and passed down to future generations. We now have the opportunity to have, demonstrate to our children how responsible adults find solutions to difficult challenges through hard work, creativity, and cooperation. So that hopefully, when their time comes, they in turn have the ability and feel the call of careful stewardship. And on a local level, we should seek out and lift up the common values that the people in our community share. So the fairgrounds is a physical space that encourages Missoula residents to reach outside their comfort zone and interact and solve problems with people who are different from them. Um, and redeveloping the fairgrounds is part of that journey. And uh, all right, so Emily Bentley does go on about why it's important. And, of course, you, many of you at home probably have your own reason of why the Missoula fairgrounds are important, while others are just kind of like, oh, just leave it alone. It's perfectly fine the way it is. And, may, and some of you may believe that is true. Um, but in this meeting, um, I want to just kind of give you a perspective of some of the information during this update. This is an update. This isn't necessarily one of those things that says we have to do this. This is going to happen. But this is one of those things that this is an informational thing, kind of like what the Missoula Fairground does. So right now, I'm going to spend most of my time talking about um, exactly the Missoula Fairgrounds basically uh, does in terms of the importance of this particular open space. So here it is. Um, Jeremy Jenkins, um, he is the, uh, let's see, Jeremy Jenkins is the, uh, he's the, uh, he's the, uh, he's the planner, the uh, facilities planner, and he's talking about the importance of this particular open space. So here's Jeremy Jenkins. The fairgrounds relate to all of the area around Midtown. So as this, as this area develops and becomes more intense, the fairgrounds become this kind of green oasis. It's this, it's this amenity that really helps Midtown be a more urban place because the fairgrounds provides that kind of open space and amenity um, that can help support development in Midtown. So as we went through the guidelines, we looked at how the, how the fairgrounds become kind of that multifunctional space. It's, it's an event space, but it's also a park space. Go ahead. So, so the different landscape types um, also follow that project, project aesthetic. You'll see the, the different themes repeated. Um, there's an agricultural landscape, which really features kind of the, the traditional patterns of, of crops and, and, and farming. Go ahead, the next one. Um, a, a traditional landscape, um, which is a little bit more geared towards that, that idea of, of grasslands and the sort of shelter belts you see around ranches in western Montana where you have the clusters of trees around the, the ranch house that are kind of out in the middle of a wide open space. Um, innovation in landscape, um, looking at opportunities to incorporate new sustainable types of infrastructure with parking lots or with drainage, um, things that, that help promote good plant growth and can be good demonstration projects for other parts of our community. All right. So let's talk about uh, something. Let's switch gears for a little bit. Many projects are happening to improve the travel and transportation to the fairgrounds. Bryce uh, came on board. Um, he, I mean, he didn't actually say his whole name during the meeting. Um, he's an economic advisor and talks about the amount of money and draw to the fairgrounds. So here is Bryce. Uh, and, you know, it's about $4 million 
uh, ultimately changes hands on the fairgrounds. Not, not all of it is going to the fair. I mean, some of that is like when you go to a concession stand at the fair, you give somebody money and then they take and do something else with it. Um, you know, and that, you know, to me that's an, an interesting and important kind of sideline to the to what goes on at the fairground. Is is, is it's not a traditional economic entity, right? It's not like oh, you know, just have all of this thing and they sell things and you know they rent things is that you know so like all that money that transacts at the concession stands most of that is fundraisers right so there's about 30 local organizations that raise nearly half a million dollars in the week at the fair um, so it's not traditional economic activity it's a little bit funky economic activity but uh, it's still something that you know that's the kind of standard economics uh, you know when you bring 125,000 people uh, into an event, money changes hands, and that money goes into a lot of different places. Uh, you know, so it's there's concessions, and then there's the kind of more standard stuff that you know people putting on events. Uh, but the other part uh, that's important to keep in mind is that there's several uh, kind of you know, like the Montana Made Fair, or the Little Road Truck, or whatever it is, and a lot of the vendors there are local craftsmen who this is their marketplace, um, and so they, you know that's another important source of of interesting and different economic activity that wouldn't, you know, maybe otherwise exist in town. So, um, all right. So anyways, Bryce is basically kind of saying what a lot of the good things, the, uh, the city, uh, I mean the, uh, um, the Missoula County Fairgrounds brings to the community in terms of money, $4 million, not a, not a bad deal. Um, they have, uh, roughly, uh, Thousands of people visit there as well, but I'll get to that in a little bit. But while going, of course, uh, over the many different um, um, ways the fair has existed has basically been a minimalist in terms of money that goes into the fair, and probably much of the money is generated by concessions and rental, not to mention the ice rink, which also has been a staple of the Missoula Fairgrounds. Um, as uh, of basically the last 10, 15 years, the, um, the ice rink has really become really popular, and a lot of times they have use from basically from 5 in the morning to about 2 in the morning, depending upon any kind of groups that go there to play hockey, to ice skate, free skate, and all that stuff, and that's been uh, a big part of the Missoula County Fairgrounds in terms of that, but there's just so much uh, opportunity and so much space that can be used to put money back into the community through the Missoula County Fairgrounds. So, of course, here's Bryce continues a little bit more about um, some of the, co uh, the uh, econ uh, economics of the Missoula County Fairgrounds. Economists, and I'm going to think about what the fairgrounds does, you know, well, how does it contribute, right? Um, and, I, you know, as an economist, of course, you can divide the world into two things. There's the economics and there's the, all the other stuff. And, of course, all the other stuff has economic stuff, too. Um, you know, and, and, and the other stuff, I think, is actually the more important stuff, even from an economist's perspective, you know, cultural, historical, social, recreational, you know, this notion of third space, right, where, uh, you know, it's a place where we kind of cultivate and preserve a historic identity in terms of, you know, the connections with the, the past and, you know, so the historical character as well as the agricultural nature. Um, but, you know, for me as a, somebody who was trained in social capital stuff, uh, probably its most important use is it's a place where people bump into each other. And bumping into each other turns out is the magic of, of forming social capital um, and building networks that exchange information. Um, you know, so when you go to the fair, like you know, you will bump into somebody, right? Like that is like a you know, in a, in a town like Missoula, that is a guaranteed thing. You will bump into people that you know. Uh, if you just go skating on a random Saturday, you will likely also bump into somebody that you know, and that's actually. And um, a lot of the things of what he's trying to say in terms of just the idea of bumping into somebody, the biggest thing in terms of bumping into somebody, imagine this. You're hanging out at the fair, doing something. You see a buddy. You say, hey, what's going on? And it's like, oh, I'm going to go get some popcorn or some cotton candy. And it's like, hmm, cotton candy. That sounds like a good idea. So you go and get cotton candy. So in a way, that money gets put into the economy of it as well. So a lot of ideas. You're, uh, it seems like a lot of times the social thing is to uh, be a part. And a lot of times is if you put money, uh, spend money on the same thing that your buddies spend money on, it also adds to it. So the whole kind of like, uh, it's like when you go to the bar, Social drinkers spend more money than the uh, by themselves drinker. Just kind of think about that in terms of that. Of course, um, Bryce also uh, mentions that um, 86,000 people regularly attend the summer fair and other programs, bringing up to about 125,000 people um, annually visit roughly um, the Missoula County Fairgrounds. Uh, Missoula Annex County Fairgrounds from Missoula County, um, like I said before, it's basically kind of like city-owned property, but it's also going to be shared through a collaboration through the Missoula and the county. The city works to approve the look 
into the council meetings for the Board of Adjustments for future challenges and solutions that best match Missoula Downtown Master Plan. So uh, Missoula Redevelopment Agency, a little bit of that, and of course then you have the uh, City uh, Board of Adjustments will be also working on some of the uh, the plans that they already have in place. And I did mention a couple times in uh, a, couple, a couple past City Council meetings and a couple people were talking about this as well, is that they do have a lot of different plans to help streamline a lot of the drop-offs for a lot of the live farm animals for FFA programs and a lot of stuff because fairs are usually uh, usually started out as a, just a way for people to go down and basically um, have bake show bake shows uh, is it bake shows bake offs um, they also have um, uh, rodeos and it's a lot of it is very animal centric where they bring a lot of animals down and they kind of do shows with animals they show off animals and then animals kind of hang out there for a week and then they leave um, but uh, since there was an update only item, this will be something that will be discussed within the Missoula Redevelopment Agency in the future. Brian Von Lossberg reflects the importance of City of Missoula's involvement with the fairgrounds. So here's Brian Von Lossberg um, from the city's perspective. Um, but I see an opportunity to realize, uh, implement what we have put into plans and uh, get it on the ground. Uh, and this is our opportunity to do it, and this is a reasonable um, use of funds, in my opinion, uh, to make that happen. And it is our opp opportunity to, to make that happen, um, and I don't want to miss it. Yeah, and I would. All right, so that was Brian Von Lossberg to uh, round out this meeting. Um, if you have any comments or if you want to say anything, uh, um, uh, land use and planning committee meetings meet. Um, you can also make a comment at the city council meeting about this as well in terms of the Missoula County Fairgrounds. The city is get, um, will be getting involved with the implementation of any future plans at the Missoula County Fairgrounds. So city council is your best bet every Monday at 7 p.m. Uh, except for uh, for a little uh, fifth Mondays of the month or holidays. Um, you guys can check it out uh, here in Missoula at the city council chambers right next, next to the Thomas Mar Bar. Um, of course, you can watch all those meetings and more by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It's such a nice, wonderful website. I love to go here. It gives you a nice little rundown about your um, uh, meetings and more, and it also gives you a nice little quick little hyperlink. So if they're talking about a, a rezoning process and you're like, eh, let's not talk about rezoning, and then they go to another thing like the Missoula County Fairgrounds about those kind of uh, topics, you can click on them, and, and then in the meeting they will show you exactly where to go in terms of that. Well, guys, I'm going to show you some arts, art clips, and this is from the Clay Studio of Missoula. Um, and you yeah, enjoy some clay. This is the, uh, let me just double check. It is the pot sketch 2018. And I believe it will be up there until the end of this month. So when I come back, I'll talk about some of the events of some of the things you can be doing this weekend since there's a lot of things happening. Uh, there's a lot of plays, a lot of things to be willing to go out and about Earth Days this weekend as well. And I'll talk about some of the events that are happening on a little bit of events that are happening on Sunday. MCAT's going to be in an event on Sunday so you can give some support to us as well. So when I come back, I'll talk about your Friday events. Um, so stay with me.
well, thanks to our very own Rick Phillips, <laughs> Rick Phillips for that uh, <laughs> very uh, amazing um, uh, art clip that he has provided. Um, most of those art clips can be uh, found and sought after by going on to MCAT.org. Let's kick things off with a little bit of uh, gymnastics, um, or should I say flip things off. Um, Mozilla Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics, and Ridge Acro Sports Center is all the places you need to be for all your indoor fun starting this morning. Right now until about noon this morning. They have some stuff in the afternoon as well, but this is usually for the little kids uh, between the ages of birth to five years of age. And speaking of birth to five years of age, Missoula Public Library hosts Tiny Tales and Storytime at Missoula Public Library at 10.30 a.m. Every 10.30, uh, pretty much most mornings at 10.30 a.m. Um, at Missoula Public Library, they host a reading um, experience for kids who uh, want to get engaged with learning, engaged with reading. Kids learn nine new words a day. Um, basic Basics of resilience. The Learning Center at Red Willow is doing a free um, resilience is a quality that lives within each of us. It is our ability to fall down and get back up again. Um, they're never going to take me out. <laughs> uh, change course when you need to and uh, persevere when required. During this workshop, you will explore what makes us resilient and how we can build up on a basic ability that each of us carries. And this happens from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Learning Center at Red Willow. And it's always a great place because you can learn all sorts of wonderful things. You know, it's not just about like interpersonal stuff, but you can also pick up a new skill too. We did a, uh, a shoot not so long ago about some of the adult learning center, and those are one of those places that are great and wonderful for it as well. But you can loop back around, back to a Mizzou Public Library, and do some yarns or watercolor. Yarns and watercolor start at noon most Fridays, and you get to do some stitching, do some um, sewing, or you can just do some watercolor. Um, crib and uh, cribbage and bridge, <laughs> or should I say uh, cridge and uh, bribbage, is happening at the Missoula Senior Center starting at 1230-ish, which one of them starts at 1245. I don't know why they just don't both start at 1230. It's ridiculous, but that's just the way they post it on MissoulaEvents.net as well. Uh, International Wildlife Film Festival is all day at the Roxy. I don't want to mention all the films because I don't have enough time in the show to mention every single film. So it's happening all day today, all day tomorrow, and I think they're going to wrap things up uh, by the end of tomorrow night as well. They'll have a bunch of parties and whatnot. Mellow House, um, disaster Parties presents 420 at Mellow House. Um, this is like the only 420 uh, party that I actually noticed that's happening on 420, um, which is today. I don't know why I said April 19th earlier today. It's weird. It, today is um, <laughs> April 20th. I, I, I didn't make a joke about 420 at all, and I never will. Um, bullets into bells. Responses to gun violence. Shakespeare and Company. Uh, today, 10 Missoula-based writers and students will read uh, selections from Bolts into Bells. Poets and citizens respond to gun violence as well as original work on a subject of gun violence. Starting at 7 p.m. at Shakespeare and Company. And if you're looking to... Uh, um, listen to some uh, some cool country old school music, like the old, like decent country music. Um, if you like country, or if you don't like country, this is a great way to get into country. Johnny Cash cover band, Cold Hard Cash, will be playing at the Wilma tonight at 7 p.m. Um, also, what's happening tonight at the Top Hat is some funk music, Ripe. Um, tons of uh, fun, X-Worm Wood album release party is happening at Monk's Bar. Um, it's hip-hop, um, Cash for Junkers at a Union Club. And Troublesome, Troublesome is going to be at the Sunrise t Saloon tonight as well. I have another art clip for you guys, and this art clip will be playing until the end of this month. So uh, stay uh, stay around. I uh, still got plenty more show. Um, after you visit the Missoula Art Museum, you can come back and you can watch the rest of my show where I talk about some of the weekend events that are happening. So stay with me.
Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks again to Rick Phillips for providing those videos for me to show you guys about a little experience of art in the Missoula County, but you got to go experience yourself because watching those clips aren't quite enough. Um, more events happening on your Saturday starting at the Montana Natural History Center, kicking things off at 10 in the morning. There's a lot of other stuff happening at 8 in the morning, lots of 5Ks, a lot of running, a lot of different stuff. You can look that up yourself, but I'm going to start with the Wildlife Extravaganza. It's a free day of fun and learning focused on wildlife. The student chapter of the Wildlife Society at the University of Montana will be hosting a family-friendly education event at the Montana Natural History Center, which is by the Osprey Baseball Field from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. They'll have a live animals from Wild Skis Raptor Center and Animal Wonders in Incorporated Animal Wonders, they rescue um, animals, um, and then they uh, basically present these animals in an educational uh, way. Um, it, animal Wonders is great. They've been on um, Joel's show a couple times. They brought a lot of exotic, exotic animals, chinchillas, a lot of endangered species that are being threatened that are um, unfortunately cannot go back into the wild. So that's what they do. It's great. Happening from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Natural Montana Natural History Center. Um, Earth Day Art Park Cleanup Party. So if you are breaking your gardening gloves and for the season to help the man whip up the art park into shape with a brand new exhibit featuring Billings area artist uh, Phoebe Knapp. Um, volunteers will meet Saturday, April 21st from 10 to noon. Projects include um, planting um, kinnikin, kinnikins, spreading much sweeping and raking up debris. Um, no experiences is necessary. Instruction provided. Please bring a closed toe shoe, so uh, no thongs. Um, please email lily at lily at museum.org to volunteer. Earth Day Cleanup, Phoebe Knapp, Beastie Boys, Chaired Box Elder Woods, 2003. Um, I don't know why, what, what, what is this? Oh. That's his hashtag. That's weird. I don't know why they said Beastie Boys. Anyways, um, Jurassic Tour, Missoula Fairgrounds, starting at 10 a.m. All this stuff is happening at 10 a.m. Um, the ultimate family adventure, embarking the Jurassic Tour to discover the ferocious creatures that ruled the Earth millions of years ago. For more information, you can visit the website at JurassicTour.com. And this happens um, Saturday and Sunday, and this is happening all day at the Missoula County Fairgrounds from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., and on Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And this can be in the Llama Barn, um, which is the 4-H and the 4-H Pavilion, so you can't miss it. It's, it's, it's going to be at the Missoula Fairgrounds and just walk around and be like, oh, there's some dinosaurs. Cool. There it is. Cool. Uh, breast Brunch. Um, it's the Breast Brunch Ever at the University of Montana. Cap Epsilon invites you to the fourth annual Breast Brunch. This year, their guest speaker will discuss such topics as disease states, resources, as, uh, as well as people who have survived breast cancer. Please join them. Um, the following link is, uh, wait, wait, wait. And you can find out more information by going to MissoulaEvents.net. Sorry about that. Um, Earth Day tree planting at Milltown State Park is happening at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, and then Milltown um, State Park Overlook is happening from 2 to 5. You can come out to Milltown State Park and plant some native trees to celebrate Earth Day. Um, they will meet at the Park Overlook, and volunteers can either hike or take a shuttle to the planting site. Please bring food, good boots, gloves, and water. Remember to dress for the weather. Tools, extra gloves, and refreshments will be provided. Park staff will be happy to talk about the uh, park tree planting, anything that you'd like to know. So come out and enjoy your state park. And the Milltown State Park is a new park. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. They were able to make this park after they got rid of the Milltown Dam, and a lot of the water kind of receded, so they had a kind of like an open area, and it was kind of nasty because they had old wood and whatnot. So they cleaned it up, dressed it up, and it's a nice Milltown Park in that area. So check that out. Um, Backcountry Sled Patriots Fundraiser is going to be at the Missoula Fairgrounds starting at 5 p.m. Live silent auction and dinner uh, is from 5 to 10 p.m. at Home Arts Building at the Missoula Fairgrounds. So if you guys are going to the Jurassic Night, you can go to the uh, Backcountry Sled Patriots Fundraiser right after. It's a nonprofit organization dedicated to keeping Montana backcountry snowmobile areas open today and for the future. And Hellgate Hunters and Wranglers Wild Night for Wildlife, Montana Natural History Center. The Hellgate Hunters and Anglers uh, 2018 is just around the corner, and you can join them for the best party in town, including live silent auction, wild games, appetizers, the HHA missions to conserve Montana's wildlife, wild places, and fair chase hunting and fishing heritage. And this is again the Montana Natural Natural History Center. Uh, once again, I want to remind you guys that American Idiot is playing at the University of Montana Montana Theater. If you're interested in um, 
checking all that stuff out as well. Um, you can go to um, grizzticks.com for more information about American Idiots. Um, yeah, it's uh, basically a musical based on Green Day's album, American Idiot. So those are some of the events that are happening that uh, day on Saturday. But here are some of the things that are happening um, um, tomorrow night. Started with uh, some DJ music, absolutely with Chris Moon is going to be at the Bat Center on Saturday night. Dead Moon Night is going to be at the Zootown Arts Community Center. Rock music, so they're going to have a basement rock show happening at the Zootown Arts Community Center at 8 p.m. Movie Cult, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls is going to be at the Roxy. Uh, Band in Motion, Union Club. Uh, Karaoke by Kaleidoscope is going to be at VFW. JD and Western Front, Sunrise Saloon, Country Music. Folk music is going to be the Top Hat Lounge. It's Laney Lou and the Bird Dogs. And of course, once again, I want to uh, remind you that on Sunday, um, Earth Day is Sunday, so they're going to have all sorts of these events and more continuing on throughout the Sunday. And I just want to tell you that MUD's Project Earth Day Celebration 2018 kicks off with the Missoula Urban Demonstration Project, and I want to give you a little uh, information on that before I wrap up. So, MUD's Earth Day Celebration uh, will highlight our community's wide efforts towards sustainability and future education in Missoula's Zero Waste Initiative. The festival includes an environment or exhibition with, or with over 45 organizations, including AMCAT. The uh, festivals include an environmental exposition with over five. Uh, uh, the exposition includes hands-on activities, demonstrations, and workshops for children and adults, like crafting recycled robots, compelling a, a passport for a free raffle ticket, playing purpose, mini golf, and more. Um, MCAT will be there with our virtual reality, which I have no idea how how virtual reality has anything to do with um, sustainability. The <laughs> Missoula Resolution for Zero Waste Sustainability Site Tours of Mud Project, Home Resources, The Source, and Beer and Brewery will take place throughout the afternoon. Climate Smart Missoula and Jordan uh, Solar will be hosting the Mini Solar Ease Workshop as a guide to acquiring solar panels and a sustainable feature at uh, feature selections will let Missoulians speed date their local sustainability organizations. So you get to check out all that and more. If you look at MissoulaEvents.net, you can see all these wonderful things that are happening at uh, the uh, Missoula Home Resources, but you can go to MissoulaEvents.net for all your information and more about all these things that are happening in the city of Missoula. Hey, what's happening in Missoula? Uh, go to MissoulaEvents.net. That's simple. But that pretty much does it for that. Um, I just want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. And I want to remind you that be sure to like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice. You can go to mcat.org for all your information. We want people to take a survey. So if, you're, um, if you want to have your opinions heard about charter cable in general, you can take the survey about it because we're going to go to talk to the charter ourselves when we go for our franchise fee ne fees negotiation. And what that is, is basically charter gives the city of Missoula money to have MCAT exist for you. And what we do is we basically uh, document everything that happens in Missoula in a cultural relevant way. So uh, we do a lot of shoots for the University of Montana. We've done the focus groups. We did the, uh, the um, basically the hiring of the president of the University of Montana via live stream. So we do a lot of live streams. We work with the MCPS uh, Missoula County Public Schools. We hire high school students to uh, basically go out and do sports for the community. So it's a good way to uh, bring a lot of the MCPS County schools together to to film a lot of the sports here in the Missoula uh, County area. So there's that. Um, you can log on to MCAT.org for more information. But once again, I want to tell you guys that summer camp registration is now open. So if you have a kid between the ages of 9 and 13, even older for zombie camp, 14 must be in high school, 14 to 18 years of age, and they must be in high school. We're looking for kids who are interested in making a gross, disgusting zombie movie with a lot of blood, a lot of gore, and a whole lot of heart, um, which would be gushing with blood. Um, so that's happening with summer camp registration. And we do these summer camps end of June and pretty much all of July. Not counting the week that July 4th happens. So if you have, you know, most people do have July 4th plans and that doesn't uh, exclude myself, so I'm not going to do any summer camps during 4th of July. It's ridiculous. So last week in June, June 25th and on, 
though that week we're going to be doing an animation camp we're doing another animation camp in july but also we'll have time travelers camp which is going to be our group effort with the fort missoula historic museum at fort missoula um is partnering with us so it's a nice way to make a uh, nice cool little documentaries and learn about some history and maybe have some fun videos about the uh a beautiful site that is the historic museum at fort missoula and fort missoula regional park and that's my pitch but then again every saturday until the end of May, MCAT is doing Saturday drop-ins. So we usually like to keep a month off between the summer camps because uh, by then the parents are just like, oh, yeah, MCAT does those Saturday drop-ins, but they're not doing it anymore. Okay, but they're doing summer camps. It's like, okay, that would be good. That will help make up for uh, not doing the Saturday drop-ins. So that is kind of like what we're going to be doing there. So that's me pitching that. MCAT.org is all you need to know. So um, thanks, thank you guys once again for joining me. It's going to be a beautiful weekend, so try to get out and about. I know I will definitely try to get out and about this weekend, um, see some of these great events, maybe even plant a tree. Um, so uh, thank you guys for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Mm -hmm.